So last week, Apple dropped two new Mac Minis, the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I decided to get the latter, but should you do the same thing? Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So last week, somewhat unexpectedly, Apple announced two new chips, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chip, as well as a brand new lineup of computers utilizing these chips, a 14 and a 16 inch M2 MacBook Pro and two new Mac minis powered by the M2 and the M2 Pro chip. And while it's cool that we have upgraded Apple Silicon MacBook Pros, and I will probably do a separate video on those, but to be honest, I'm much more excited about these new Mac minis. Let me explain. I do all of my work on my 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, whether I'm traveling or at my studio where it stays docked and hooked up to my studio display pretty much 99% of the time. But there are also times where I need a computer for podcasting and streaming and even for some music production. And until now, I've always been unplugging my MacBook Pro and taking it to whatever desk I needed it at. And especially for streaming, this has been a pain in my neck because I have to hook up the cameras, the audio, my A10 Mini Pro over here every single time I want to do that. So I've been looking into getting a dedicated machine for that purpose for quite a while now. And the Mac Mini always came to the top of my list to use for that kind of stuff. But at first I didn't want to get an Intel because I'm so used to Apple Silicon now and then I considered getting the M1 Mac Mini but I never really pulled the trigger and ended up waiting so long that it felt like it would make much more sense to wait for an updated model. And as it turns out, that was in fact the right decision because these new Mac Minis are a significant improvement over the previous ones and they're a little bit cheaper. Anyway, I'm hyped about these minis and I'm even more hyped because the configuration I picked just got delivered to the studio. And I know a Mac mini doesn't look as exciting as a MacBook Pro or even a new iPad, but I decided to wait unboxing this thing so I could do it together with you guys because let's face it, we're all geeks here and it's fun to peel that plastic off a virgin Apple product. And it also gives me an opportunity to explain and show you guys why I went for the Pro version instead of the regular M2 chip. Now, the design of the Mac Mini has been the same for many, many years now. And call me a nerd, but I really like this design. I don't know why it gets so much hate. I love how minimal it looks, and I think it's gonna look super, super clean paired with my Apple Studio display. <sighs> now tell me that is not super, super satisfying. Yes, sir. Right, now obviously most of the upgrades to this new Mac Mini are internal and they're not visible on the outside and we will get to those as well. But there are some important external differences between the M2 Mac Mini and this M2 Pro, which is one of the reasons I chose to get this Pro model. What we see on the back is of course the power, there's an ethernet port, which comes with a standard gigabit speed, and it can be upgraded to 10 gigabit, which is blazing fast. But of course that is only useful if your internet carrier actually offers 10 gigabit ethernet and the area where you live has those cables available. Neither are true for me here in Belgium. So I opted for the standard gigabit ethernet port, saving me a hundred bucks. The same is true for Wi-Fi, by the way, both models are Wi-Fi 6E compatible, but of course that only means something if you do in fact have a Wi-Fi 6E setup at home, which I'm guessing many people don't since it's a fairly new technology. So keep that in mind, what you see is not always what you get. Next, you see four Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is unique to the Pro model because the regular M2 model has only two Thunderbolt 4 ports. And since I have a lot of devices I need to hook up to mine for the intended use case, this has been a very important factor for me. Next, we have the HDMI port, which is now finally HDMI 2.1, meaning it can drive multiple 4K monitors and even an 8K monitor. This is something I didn't really understand why it was missing from the M1 MacBook Pros, but it's good that these new machines come with the updated HDMI protocol. And then we have two USB-A ports, which always comes in handy for those older devices that still require USB-A or maybe a thumb drive or something like that. And last but not least, there is a 3.5 millimeter jack. I personally won't be using that and I find it a little awkwardly positioned on the back of the machine, but maybe some people will still use it. So those two extra Thunderbolt 4 ports are really the main 
visible difference between these two new Mac minis, but it can really make or break your setup unless you want to work with a bunch of hubs or dongles. So it's definitely something to consider when deciding between the two models. Right, so like I said earlier, the real differences are not on the outside, they're under the hood. But let me start by saying that both models are a significant upgrade from their predecessors, considerably faster than the M1 Mac mini, and let's not even compare it to the Intel Mac minis. I know Apple likes to do that on stage, but at this point, it just feels like we're making fun of Intel machines. Anyway, what makes the Mac mini such a compelling device is the fact that it provides an entry into the Apple ecosystem at a very affordable price. I mean, the base model starts at only $599, which is a lot cheaper than most PCs. And let's be honest, it's a lot better. So the entry level price of $599 buys you the newest M2 chip with an 8 core CPU, a 10 core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, a 16 core neural engine, and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And as we saw earlier, it comes with quite a bit of IO, two Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and an ethernet port. That is a very capable machine for the money. And if you're looking for a desktop computer for everyday use that will last you for about five plus years, this is a steal. But even if you wanna use it for more than just everyday stuff, let's say you wanna edit some 4K video, and I know not everyone is a video editor, I'm just using this as an example to illustrate. Technically, the base model can totally do that. But here's where things get more complicated and the Apple trickery begins. Because if you plan to edit videos with this thing, you're gonna wanna upgrade the unified memory to at least 16 gigabytes, especially if you plan to keep this machine for the next years to come. Also, 4K video projects can get pretty large, so to make use of that blazing fast internal SSD, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade your internal storage to something closer to one terabyte. Okay, now we're looking at a price tag of 1200 bucks. And now you're thinking, well, wait a minute, for an extra $100, I can get the M2 Pro chip, which comes with two additional CPU cores, six additional GPU cores, and two extra Thunderbolt ports. You would be stupid not to do that, right? So let's do that. But wait, we do want that one terabyte, don't we? Bam, now you're looking at 1500 bucks. That's a hell of a lot more than 599. Now, some of us might think, well, since I'm getting into that price range anyway, I might as well make sure this thing is future proof. Maybe I should upgrade to the 12 core CPU and the 19 core GPU. That will surely get me through the next five years. I better upgrade the unified memory too though, especially if I'm gonna be editing videos. Well, hello, Mr. $2,200. Now this is where you need to stop yourself because 2,200 bucks buys you a Mac Studio, including an upgrade to a 32 core GPU. All right, I'm making a little bit of a mockery out of this, but I guess you know what I'm trying to say. The good people at Apple are masters at upselling. They put the next better machine so close to your upgraded configuration that it's very easy to trick yourself into buying more than you probably need or at least more than you set out to buy when you clicked on the website. I managed to pace myself this time and I decided before going in that that base model M2 Pro Mac Mini made sense for the use cases I have planned for it and I promised myself not to apply any upgrades. And I will of course be putting this thing to work for my full review, so if you're not subscribed already, time to clickety-click, it will be much appreciated. Anyway, my suggestion to you would be to really think about what you will use this machine for and buy the corresponding spec. There will always be something newer and better on the horizon, but the key is to figure out what you need before going in and sticking to your plan. Guys, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.